Hey hey, this is Maarten Baljau from JetBrains. In this screencast we will have a look at the subsystems feature in .Race Performance. The first time you profile an application and capture a snapshot, the amount of information displayed can be overwhelming. Where to start? Should I inspect all threads and all calls? Do we need all these details to get a sense of where to look for issues? Well, you may need them over time, but a good place to start is by examining subsystems. .trace can group profiling snapshot data based on the time consumed by certain components grouped by a namespace or assembly. For example, we can see if time has been spent in WinForms, .pf, external libraries or in our own code. The application I have here is a simple demo application written in c -sharp and WinForms. It can be downloaded from the tutorials page. Our application renders temperature data on a chart. Depending on the number of data points rendered, it gets rather slow to load and render data. It's not really insanely slow, but we can clearly see that there's a little delay between clicking the button and seeing the rendered charts. Is this because of blocking I.O.? Or maybe a slow database server? Or maybe I'm making the database server slow by issuing bad queries? Or maybe it's the chart control use that's being slow. Let's see if we can find out what may be causing this. In order to get a profiling snapshot, we will have to launch a profiler session. We can do this by launching .trace performance and selecting one of the different application types it can profile. But since I have the source code open in Visual Studio anyway, let's launch the profiler from there. We can find it under the .trace menu item here. From the Profiler Configuration dialog, we can specify some additional options like command line arguments and a profiling mode. Since this is a first exploration, let's just go with the defaults. If we click Run, the Profiler will be launched in our application as well. We know that the performance issue occurs when clicking the Load Temperature Data button here, so let's try and reproduce it. And we can maybe do it a couple of times, just to make sure we gather enough information. As soon as we feel we've gathered enough information, we can click the Get Snapshot button to launch .trace and open the snapshot data we've just captured. The first thing we see in .trace is the Overview page. This page contains general information about our application performance. We can see a list of hotspots we can also see snapshot and application information and more. This page also contains a list of subsystems shown against the application's threads. For example, we can see that the main thread is working with the WinForm subsystem extensively. It's also working with system code and collection subsystems. Even if we don't know the application codebase very well, we can still see the different components the application calls into. Let's first have a look at the threads tree. The top list shows us the function and the thread selected. The subsystems are shown in block view in the middle of our screen. We can visually identify the major blocks of subsystems that have been called into. On a side note, the time spent in the fpush message loop subsystem here is not a problem. It's just the Windows message loop and how WinForms works. Even with just all the default subsystems, we can already understand which subsystems are used the most. We can drill into the threads tree and explore the functions being called. The subsystems view will change based on which function we are looking at. I'm following the red arrows here, denoting the path which .rays identified as taking most time. It's a good one to follow, as it almost always points to a performance issue. We can see that most of the time in this function is spent in WinForms. And from the list below, we can drill into the subsystems called and look at more details. Now where do these subsystems come from? Well, they are defined in the default profile, which comes with .trace performance. The default profile includes all major .NET framework subsystems, such as WinForms and .pf, collections, link, reflection and so on. For many applications, Using the default profile with the default subsystems will be enough. However, we may want to create our own profile to get a better view and understanding of the subsystems that are called into. From the View menu, 
We can open the options and navigate to subsystems, or we can make use of the wrench icon in the subsystems block view. In here, we can see the available profiles, such as the default one, as well as the different subsystems that are displayed in this profile. Let's add a new one and give it a name, for example, demo. We can select the subsystems we want to have visible when this profile is selected. For now, we will keep the profile empty. If we close the options and select our newly created profile, we can see dot traces making use of so-called smart subsystems. Depending on the type of application that's being profiled, it will assign calls to the system code, user code and special subsystems. For our demo application here, it would make more sense to assign some subsystems to our profile, so let's do that. The subsystems list here shows us that quite some time is required for handling the chart component. In fact, the Windows Forms.Data Visualization.Charting subsystem takes the majority of time in System.Windows.Forms. Let's see if we can create a custom charting subsystem so we can better investigate. We can create a new subsystem from the subsystems view itself using the context menu. We can select to either add it to an existing subsystem or create a new one. Let's create a new one and give it a name and a color. We can specify which assemblies our classes should be included. We can do this at the assembly level or using fully qualified name prefixes. Since we've used the context menu, these values are already populated but let's broaden them a bit by changing the namespace. When we click OK, .trace will have our new subsystem available and update the views accordingly. The subsystem we just added is one based on the .NET Framework assemblies, but do note that you can also add subsystems for your own application or components. For example, if we would be suspicious about a custom control we created, or a utility function, we could add a subsystem for that as well. Having just one subsystem doesn't really make sense, so let's open the options again, so we can add some more. Let's select the weight subsystem so we can see if we have threads waiting. We also want to include the WindForms subsystem as we're working with a WindForms application anyway. Let's maybe also add system.io to see all I.O. String, link, collections and reflection. We can immediately see the new subsystems we created on screen. That's quite some time spent calling into our charting subsystem, as well as the collection subsystem. Most time, however, is spent in the eSmart Label Collide subsystem. The charting control used in this application allows rendering labels for every data point. The eSmart Label Collide calls originate from determining if a label collides with other markers on the rendered charts. It seems checking for these collisions is causing quite some computation in our application. So let's go to the source codes. From Visual Studio, we can try disabling this feature. Let's find the control, the series, and set the is value shown as label option to false. In a future version of our application, we may want to make this an end user option, but for now, we just want to see if it actually solves our performance issue. Let's recompile our application and run the profiler again. We can go with all the defaults and just run our application. Let's try reproducing the issue again and click the load temperature data button. We can see there are no labels being rendered, but we disabled that in Visual Studio just a moment ago. Clicking get snapshot will save the profiler data and open dot trace again. The dot trace overview page already shows us a number of differences. The subsystems used by the main thread no longer feature the collection subsystem. If we look at the threads tree again and we drill down to where we initially found our bottleneck, we can enable our custom subsystems profile. As we can see, usage of the charting subsystem has been reduced to a minimum. Great, isn't it? We've just found and fixed the performance issue by looking at subsystems only. For more information and examples, check out our website and tutorial. Thank you for watching, until next time!